So guys, we're now three weeks into what's already been a pretty insane Premier League season. We've already been treated to over 100 goals, and this weekend featured some pretty big results, including another seven-goal thriller, as well as our poor Patrick Hero. Lots to talk about, so let's get straight to it. The first game of the week was Brighton versus Manchester United. Last week, I mentioned how happy I was seeing VAR mess with Man U, but this week, they were back to their old tricks. First, they saved Man United from an admittedly soft penalty, before then awarding them a penalty after the final whistle. I do see why Brighton fans feel aggrieved, but looking at it objectively, I feel like Man U fans would have had more cause to feel aggrieved had the penalty not been given. It's a strange situation, but I do think that, in the end, the right decision was made. I would also like to give a shout out to Marcus Rashford for adding himself to the goal of the month contenders. He literally put, what, three defenders on their asses with that solo run? But my vote will still be for Reese James. Moving on to who is flying high, and I feel bad for overlooking Everton again, but I just have to go for Leicester. I mean, they just beat Man City by five goals to two at the Etihad. That's literally the word for who's flying high, who dropped the ball, and shock of the week, all in one game. Leicester actually started this game quite timidly, but once they recognised how frail that Man City backline is, they really went for the kill. Nathan Ake is the only one of those starting defenders who shouldn't feel the need to publicly apologise for his display, and I'm only saying that because he was the only one who didn't give away a brainless penalty. The sooner that Man City managed to bring in Ruben Diaz, the better. But still, big congratulations to Leicester. I definitely wasn't the only one who thought they might struggle this season, and so far, they haven't gotten the memo. Potential champions, anyone? Next up is who dropped the ball, and I was really hoping that I could go all season without saying this, but let's be honest. It's Chelsea. Yes, the spirit and the fight and the comeback and the character is all great, but the thing is, we should never have needed to show all that because we should never have found ourselves 3-0 down against West Brom in the first place. The goals we gave away were just criminal. Thiago Silva got a really early lesson in why you can't mess around in the back line in this league. And Marcus Alonso, I reckon he's played his last game in a Chelsea shirt. While we did manage to follow up our defeat to Liverpool with a 6-0 cup victory over Barnsley, it was really important that we picked up all three points in this game. And if we drop the ball again against Crystal Palace next week, I'll be starting to get worried. On to the shock of the week now. And since the two games I've previously talked about were pretty much the top contenders for this, I had to look a little bit further into the fixtures. Really though, the answer was obvious. West Ham beating Wolves by four goals to nil. West Ham can feel a bit hard done by having picked up zero points from their opening two games, despite having put in decent performances. They seem to recognise that they needed to pick something up against Wolves here, but I don't think even the most optimistic of West Ham fans could have predicted them sticking four past the usually solid Wolves. Up next for the Hammers is a trip away to Leicester, so they definitely can't afford to sit around patting themselves on the back, but still, they should go into this game every bit as confident as their high-flying opponents, so I'm expecting a great match here. Speaking of Leicester, it's time to announce the week's shining star, and of course, Jamie Vardy's having a party. Yes, two of his three goals were penalties, but his performance was so much more than his goals. The guy's 33 years of age, and he had one of the best teams in Europe's defence absolutely terrified of him. He looks a little bit slower than he did back when Leicester won the league, but his movement off the ball was just so good that those Man City defenders simply couldn't handle him. To be fair to them, they won't be the only defence this season that struggles to manage him. And with what he's been showing so far, I don't think anyone can argue with him being considered the hot favourite to win the Golden Boot this year. He did seem to pick up a little knock at the end of the game, but with an international break coming up after their next match, I doubt Brendan Rodgers would be too worried about him missing game time. Big honourable mention though to Callum Robinson, bit of Irish bias, but I did really want to give him this award, but I mean how can you ignore a hat-trick away to Manchester City? Now normally at this point in the video I'd talk about Chelsea, but I've already done that so instead I'm going to talk about this new handball rule. I mean I understand the rule, this is your jersey line and anywhere below that is considered your hand, 
and your hand being anywhere outside of a natural silhouette is considered an unnatural position. Thus, if the ball strikes a player and both of these criteria are met, it's handball, no matter what. What I don't understand is why they've decided that this is the best way to settle the what is, what isn't handball debate. It's only been three weeks and there's already been, what, five incidents where a handball penalty was given that I never would have considered a penalty before. These include situations where the ball struck the defender's hand from very close range at power, a situation where the ball deflected up onto his hand from another part of his body, and the incident in the Spurs-Newcastle game where Eric Dyer was penalised for handballing when he wasn't even facing the ball, so quite literally couldn't have intentionally handballed it. While you won't see me riding the sympathy train for Spurs anytime soon, you don't want to see games decided by incidents like this. People have been blaming referees and VAR for this, but technically they're just making the right decision based on what the new rule is. So hopefully the rule is altered enough to allow referees to use their common sense before awarding a penalty. Anyway guys, what do you make of this new handball rule? Are you happy that it leads to more goals? Or do you think that a lot more games could be potentially ruined by it? Comment below and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.